hello guys and welcome back to the channel so now guys there are several fault lines along the nigerian topology and uh, yeah, by that i mean of course the political cultural ethnic topology and not the geo topology but there are uh, several fault lines as i said and this storyline that i'm about to bring you exemplifies that yet again guys i bring you this nuhu ribado's daughter apologizes to friends and family for her choice of wedding dress so this is a, a storyline that is now all over the nigerian social media space nuhu ribadu of course the former czar of the efcc especially under the obasanjo regime his daughter has recently gotten married within the week actually marrying the son of atiku abubakar i was actually going to do a separate video on that just to show you the political mix of nigeria because i wanted to do a name count of the people that were at that uh, wedding in that video people like tenobu were there uh Atiku, of course was there father of the groom uh, ribadu was there who was uh, fighting corruption and the two leading corruption figures are uh, or two of the leading corruption figures should i say uh Atiku being his now uh in law and family now and uh tenobu of course of the bullion so so you can just see that whole mess right there but that is not what this uh, particular video is about. Again, Nuhu Ribadu's daughter apologizes to friends and family for her choice of a wedding dress. So now let's now find out what's led to this apology. Fatima, the new daughter-in-law of former Vice President Atiku Abubakar, has regretted the choice of dress she wore for her wedding, which caused a stare on social media amongst adherents of her faith. Fatima, who is the daughter of the former Economic and Financial Crimes Commission EFCC chairman, Nuhu Ribaudu, got married to Aliyu Abubakar at the weekend in Abuja. The event was attended by top political figures including APC chieftain uh, Bola Tinubu and uh, state governors. So we've already spoken about uh, Tinubu attending that uh, wedding. So let's just uh, uh, press on. Her choice of wedding dress generated backlash and criticism amongst followers of her faith on social media, including Kaduna APC chieftain Dr. Hakim Baba Ahmed, who described it as unbecoming of her faith and culture. In a statement issued on Instagram on Tuesday, October the 5th, Fatima said that the color fabric under the dress is the same with her skin, which made people think she exposed her skin. So now this is now what she wrote in her defense. She wrote, I got married on Saturday the 3rd, 10, 20, and some pictures of me that were taken inside our home got out and was shared on social media. This is an action which I sincerely regret. I apologize to my friends and family for this mistake and want to sincerely thank each and every one that has risen to my defense. My underdress, which was brownish, was mistaken for being my skin and exposing my body. I will never do such. However, I accept responsibility for causing my family and well wishers this dismay and will learn from this going forward so now this is now the position that this girl has uh, been forced to take so look at the timeline the time that she wrote this um apology piece was on the 5th of october the time that she got married was on the 3rd of october so the girl got married on the 3rd of october the most important day ever in her life by the way because there's no day more important in the life of a girl than her wedding day it probably even supersedes the day that she has her first child because of course it's the precursor to that day that uh, she has her first child it's the thing that facilitates her being able to have that first child so it's the most important day more important than her graduation etc more important than anything the day she leaves her father's home but how would the malamis have it the malamis would have it be the case that this girl is forced into a position that she's having to issue a public apology two days 
after her wedding day. So now why is she having to issue that apology? And by the way, the picture that you're seeing on your screen is the picture that has led to this apology. So look at the dress that this girl is wearing on her wedding day, by the way, because the wedding day, of course, is entirely for the bride and no one else. So she then wants to celebrate her being, she wants to celebrate her femininity, she wants to celebrate all that she is, and she wants to mark that in her own accent so that accent of course is how that wedding uh the venue is prepared the dress of course that she wears has to be entirely her choice and then of course the food etc she has to have a say over all of this so the whole packaging of that day is the accent that the bride is uh, choosing to present so now look at the accent that this girl is uh, presenting she's a well-formed very pretty girl uh, who is living her father's home and she's celebrating that with a demure wedding dress that covers her from head to toe so a bit of shoulder showing but then of course why not uh, now if this was a wedding dress uh, for a Yoruba bride not only would anybody not say anything the criticism uh, that she's probably likely to have within the Yoruba community is that that dressing is too conservative for that day it's, it's not risque enough she's not uh, flaunting enough and I suspect that she would get a similar response within the Igbo community but then of course within the north they will have her from head to toe in Puda and then have her brick walled round maybe a chastity belt to be padlocked as well and her lips clenched together I don't know what culture they have there but if this wedding dress that this uh, young lady is wearing is enough for a senior APC member and by the way this person that spoke this uh, APC chieftain what is his name again Dr. Hakim Baba Ahmed is a highly educated man because I watch a lot of politics and he comments a lot he's a highly educated man a very reasonable person in speech and uh, a good grasp of the language of the English language and a flow of a very erudite mind this is a very sharp and an educated man, educated, of course, of the largest of our Niger Delta oil wealth, but then we leave that to one side. But then, of course, at the core of their being, these people are Jamjaweed. So you can uh, take the lion from the lion's den, but you cannot turn it into a tiger. They are instinctually and fundamentally and innately that way. And that way is in contrast, uh, almost in conflict with the way we are. So this is the fault line now that we have within the Nigerian firmament. And this uh, wedding again is yet another example of that. So if they find offense in this, then that just speaks to the language that we've been hearing, especially over the last uh, five years or so. Because a lot of you may recall, and especially some of you who have been following this channel for a while, that I did a video some time ago. There was this craze going around a few months ago. It was called the Bob Daddy Challenge, where you wear one outfit and then you flick your hand or your uh, an item across a camera, and then when it pans back, you are in a totally different uh, outfit. They called it the Bob uh, Daddy Challenge then, and then there was this rather young, very pretty uh, customs office who decided to be part of society and partake in that uh, Bob Daddy challenge. So they were wearing their uh, customs uniform, of course, and then they will flick their hat, the, the hat that they wear on their head, they will flick it across the camera, and when it pans back, they're in an elegant evening wear that is accentuating their body. So of course, the full and head of the custom services would not have this because yet again they are not in Puda from head to toe and he went ahead to say that they were debasing the uniform and he sent them a query letter and started the procedure to get them kicked out of the service but for public outcry these people would have been kicked out of the service and I'm sure some of them would have been or at least uh, either demoted or pulled back in their ranking. So this is the going on now. It is that fault line which is a cultural chasm between all of us really. I wouldn't just say us and the North. It's not so much pronounced between the 
uh, Yorubas and the Igbos, but that chasm is still there between the Yorubas and the Igbos, and we're uh, dealing with Nigeria roughly as three elements because that's the rough translation. I know we have in excess of 250 ethnicities within uh, Nigeria, but in broad strokes, we think uh, uh, Igbos, Yorubas, and the North. This is what we think in broad strokes. And in those broad strokes, the cultural chasm, the worldview chasm, the orientation chasm, the mindset chasm, the thinking chasm, the gulf between our being as a person, as a people, is so marked that the fault line in that firmament is too sharp for us to really say that we're one nation. And this wedding now is yet another example of that. You may well think that the link between the wedding and the analogy that I am drawing is not uh, is a bit uh, feeble, but it is not at all feeble because this uh, wedding and the sort of backlash that is getting amongst the Malamins to the consternation of the Southerners is yet another example and it captures the very essence of that fault line. Conversations in the comment section, they are at it again, the Jamja weeds, everything is Yamutu and backwardness with them. Uh, come share thoughts. But before you do that, click on the red subscribe button so it turns grey. The bell button notifies you every time I drop a new video. Click on like as well because that helps with the YouTube algorithm. Once you've done all the clickings, a simple wedding uh, between the GBT merchants, Ribadu and Atiku, with Tunubu, of course, the supervisor, because he's the lead GBT man now. Uh, so a simple wedding has now turned into a public outcry because of, of our elegant dress won by the uh, bride. This is the summation of it. So how you are summing it up is what I am interested in and I would like to hear all about that in the comment section. So I'll leave you here. Carry this conversation on with you in the comment section. But here I say peace.